to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. The High Court has said thanks but no thanks to Jeff McCloy's High Court challenge. Joining us this morning is Dr David Tompkins. He's a lecturer in law at the Newcastle University in the Faculty of Law, Newcastle Law School as it's otherwise known. Hi and welcome, David. Oh, good to be back with you. I know that you have just come from reading 100 pages of this High Court challenge, so if, you, if you're feeling a little uh, sort of mind-bended by that experience, then I, I really am sorry to do that to you, but I know that you wanted to be across it, David. Well, I, I'd have to read it anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so it was no, not a problem. It wasn't an extra task. So let's recap on this, David. Jeff McCloy went to the High Court with three specific aims. What were they? Well, he was challenging uh, essentially three things under the electoral funding laws. One was a ban on donations by property developers. Another was a general cap saying that donors can only give $5,000 donations. And the third was a um, a ban on donations in kind, so non-cash donations like paying an electoral staff a salary or donating office space, okay. those kind of things. Or, or, or wine or, or, ju- yeah, or, or yeah. gifting. Of any yeah, essentially any non-cash you know, a trip on a boat Donation, or that yeah. sort of stuff. Okay, gristing the mill, it might be otherwise known as. So what did the High Court decide? I know, I know that this is a lengthy judgment and, and we probably haven't got time to go into the full detail, but give me, give me the nub of it. Well, the short answer is he lost. <laughs> the slightly longer answer is that um, the High Court looked at each of those three things individually and he lost unanimously on two of them, that is on the... Um, the caps on donations of $5,000 and the ban on donations in kind. So all seven judges of the High Court said those are OK. They don't impinge upon the implied freedom of political communication. On the uh, ban on donations by developers, he lost 6-1. He managed to get ju- one, one of the seven judges on the High Court to agree with him on that. But six said, no, those laws are still legitimate by the Parliament. Now, you just said there, political communication. That's really been the nub of this, hasn't it? Jeff McCloy has said that he was discriminated against as a developer because not being able to make donations and gift and gift in kind and having a cap on those donations in some way prevented him from communicating with politicians. However, it was quite interesting. I think it was um, one of the politicians out of Western Australia. He was actually the Solicitor General. He got to his feet, Grant Donaldson, and said, the legislation neither impedes or prevents a property developer from communicating. They can simply pick up the phone and talk to them. And that's kind of the nub of this, isn't it? That a developer can talk to a politician about anything. Well, well, that's right. Uh, but one, one of the judges went part of the way to agreeing with Mr McCloy on that point. Okay. But the six, the other six said, no, um, he is, these laws don't impinge upon his ability to communicate. But they do still burden communication, they said, but only in a very slight way. They, they, they burden the ability of the recipients of the money, right, because that's money they couldn't otherwise spend on electoral advertising. Mm. And so the High Court said, yes, those laws burden the recipient's ability to engage in political communication, but that's very slight. And it's justified in the circumstances because of a perception of undue influence and corruption. So is this the greater good coming to the fore here, David? Is that how it's sort of perceived? Yeah, I I think so. I mean, in in, in kind of layman's terms, um, the High Court needs to do this kind of balancing act. On the one hand, they'll say, do these laws burden political communication? And then there's a question of, if so, why? And in that equation is just how much? And they said, they don't burden it very much. Um... And there is the greater good about the perception of corruption and undue influence that the uh, parliament is legitimate in tackling. In some of the office chat yesterday, I heard someone say, well, Jeff McCloy's just spent $2 million to be told he can't give away his money to who, whomever he wants, you know. Um, why can't, you know, he should be able to give away his money. if he... It's really not just about giving away money, though. It's trying to buy influence and what that influence can then do for you in return, isn't it? Well, that's right. So the, the High Court talked about this because one of the arguments he ran was essentially um, people, people who have more money should be able to donate to whomever they want and, that, and a consequence of that is they can get access to politicians. Uh, and the majority of the High Court um, essentially disagreed with that and said that, no, no, it's legitimate for a state parliament to, to seek to minimise that kind of influence that wealth can buy and to 
kind of have equality in political discourse. Is that because the state legislature is really the governing body for planning and the ones who set the rules for developers and are most likely and prone to influence and trying to be bought off? Well, it, it's, more the, it's more the ministers than, than the legislature, and the ministers are members of the parliament. Um, so, yes, part of the argument was that <clears throat> why is parliament singling out developers? Because Mr McCloy said it's not legitimate to just single out developers. There are other people who can be prone to corruption. Uh, and the High Court's answer to that was, well, this is a very significant area in that um, development applications are the exercise of what's known as discretionary powers, people have a choice. It's largely local councils, but some areas are ministers. Um, and so it's open to people through the use of political donations to try and influence the way those decisions are made. And those, I mean, the framework is set by parliament, but those powers are then conferred in, like in the local, in the planning minister or something mm. like that. They have decision to say yes or no to certain development consents. Now, you mentioned it there. There's also an onus on local government in relation to planning and development. And do you think that these laws now uh, might be moved into local government and even federal government? Did the High Court say anything about that, David? Well, they, they touched on it um, just obliquely or tangentially on the side. Um, they noticed, they noted that these are probably the only laws of their kind in the world. Oh, okay. So there's a question there whether other governments in Australia, other states and maybe the federal government might try to do something similar and enact um, restrictions on um, develop donations by developers, um, particularly other states. I think they'll be looking at this very closely. And then even within New South Wales, there was a big argument in the case about um, these laws not applying equally to local government as they do to state government funding. Um, the state parliament might try and extend these into areas of local government too. Because essentially local government comes under the auspices of the state government, don't well, they? Well, it does. The mm. parliament can... That's right. So they, they could extend the ban on donations um, try, about trying to influence local government councillors as well. And on the face of it, over the years, there has been a high level of cases, Wollongong Council, for example, many councils that have had cases where developers have had to try, bought their way into the planning department. It's such an interesting case, David, and I think we're going to see and hear much more of this whole debate on political donations and trying to purchase influence on democracy. Dr. David Tompkins, lecturer in law at Newcastle University Law School. Thanks for your time and I better let you get up there because I know you've got to do some teaching on this and other things this morning. Oh, thanks for your time. Thank you, David.